there, and welcome to another stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. I am Johnny Chiodini. Look at me go. And uh, today, as you might have seen from the slightly troubling thumbnail, uh, we are going to be painting some horrible, horrible Blood Bowl men. Uh, because uh, there's a manufacturer called Grebo Games who makes very nice sculpts. Uh, but these ones are horrible, obviously. And this is sort of like a Nurgle... I mean, they they are meant to be played as Nurgle models. Um, but yeah, they're just sort of like horrible, pestilential uh, people who are in service to uh, the Rot Father. Um, Nurgle, who's... Um, um, yeah. Just generally a bit like blah blah blah. blah. Um, uh, da, 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 let me just fix the uh, um, focus. <laughs> I had a nap earlier and I'm still not quite awake. Uh, so these are three that I've already done. But today I'm going to try and do a batch of. Um, I've basically got these ones that are just sort of base shaded. I'm going to try and do a batch of five of them because they're actually quite quick to paint up. Um, and, uh, we'll see how we get on. So, how is everybody doing? Sorry I didn't stream yesterday, but I went to see Dune in the cinema, and I got out, and I was so excited, I couldn't stream. <laughs> My friends were like, we're gonna go get a beer and talk about the movie. I was like, I'm going to come. I have to come with you. Uh, it's great. Uh, no spoilers from me, obviously. Uh, Martin Thomas says, fun looking minis, what was the name of the manufacturer? Um... Uh, like Grebo Games. Grebo Games. Very, very quick service. Not the cheapest models, but very, very nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to spoil Dune, obviously, for anyone who hasn't read the book or, or seen the film yet. And uh, I would be very much obliged if uh, people in the chat uh, held to the same rules. But, yeah, it's a really great film. I'm trying to avoid hyperbole. Um, but I was uh, genuinely blown away. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I can't remember the last time I saw a book to film adaptation that was so good and so faithful so yeah hello everybody uh Brooke Boy to sound super chat saying thank you for being such an amazing person and having a lovely community it was my birthday yesterday so have a treat on me I'll have to watch the rest of this later as hanging out with my mum hope the painting goes well happy birthday for yesterday Brooke I'm so sorry I wasn't live to tell you then but hopefully you had a bloody lovely um a bloody lovely birthday um I think it's a great time. Uh, Will asks, how does Dune compare to the original version, 1997's Spice World? Well, the soundtrack is great, but it's a lot harder to dance to. I'll say that much. Um, Dylan Cadogan? I hope I said that right. I suspect I might not have. Cadogan? Cadogan, probably. Um, says, good morning from San Francisco. Thanks for being a paragon of calm in the shit maelstrom of the present. Uh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Really, it's just me trying to keep myself calm. So we're all doing it. Um, Will says, when you say it's faithful to the originals, you mean it's infinitely long and unbelievably complex. No, it's, it's it, they do a good job. It's it's a good it's a good film. I like it. Uh, so yeah, hello to everybody watching. Um, oh, the nice witches in chat. Um, it is nice to see you all. Um, hang on, I need to get my paint water out. Delicious paint water. And uh, then let's get to painting. How is everyone doing? Did you have a good weekend? Do you have a good Monday? If you are crafting, what are you watch uh, what are you working on? What are you watching? That you're not watching. Well you're watching this, presumably. But what are you what are you working on? Um I hope you uh, are having a nice crafty time, if indeed you are crafting. And if not, and you're just hanging out, I hope you're having a bloody lovely relaxing relaxation time. So there. Take that. And start laying down. I've sort of, as you might have seen from the models that I um, I uh, showed at the start of this, I went for a kind of cream armour, but I, I couldn't resist laying down some of the sort of classic Nurgle dark green colours here and there, so... Uh, I'm going to start off with that, and then we'll work up to the cream armor. Cream, 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 etc., etc. Scott Perkins says, Monday was a nightmare. I want it to be Friday already. Sorry to hear it, Scott. That sucks. Um, 
Ooh, Josephine of Undeadberg says, I'm resting because I've just done a COVID test. Been ill for three weeks and absolutely exhausted. Glad to be here. That is a long time to be ill and exhausted. I'm very sorry. And I hope, uh, I hope you know, the test comes back negative. Uh, I hope you work out why you're, you're ill. And I hope it gets sorted bloody soon. I'm sorry to hear it. Corvus Albright is on Super Chat saying, woke up, to particularly, uh, woke up particularly early thinking I had a meeting scheduled at 8 a.m. Turns out that meeting isn't until Thursday. So early Jaeger bombs. <laughs> Thank you, Corvus. That's very kind. I'm actually going to open a beer. Because why not? Well, that was a fun noise. Oh, bloody hell. Right. Hmm. Matt Willis is crafting cheesecake at the moment. That sounds amazing. I hope it is nice. Nathaniel Levy says, what is the drink of the day? I'm drinking a can of Guinness. Other stouts are available. Oofed. Um, I'm going to put some music in my ears. I really need to wake up. I'm very tired today. I, get, I mean, I, woke, I worked most of the weekend, to be honest, so uh, that would probably do it. Thanks to everyone uh, who came to the Oxventure at MCM on Sunday. It was a jolly good time. We had our very first Oxventure guest, uh, which isn't shouldn't really be a spoiler, just that we had someone come and play as a guest. Um, a man named Harry McIntyre, who's been in The Last Kingdom and other things. And uh, amusingly enough, it turns out he knows some friends of mine. I didn't find out until afterwards, though, which was upsetting, because I would have loved to just casually drop that in. But you can't win them all. Oh, yeah, I need to take the ring pull off. Thanks, Lucentheus. Or oh, RV Dammit is crafting slabs in Deathloop. Yes, please. Hey, RV Dammit. Check this out. Look what I got. It's only some bloody bold titanium white from Pro Acryl, which finally arrived, along with uh, these four colours, golden brown, faded ultramarine, jade, and ivory. So thank you again for um, encouraging me to get on board with, with those paints. I'm ex extremely excited to try the bold titanium white, which is um, good, because I'm actually going to be painting... The White Dwarf himself, Grumbrindal, for an upcoming game of Blood Bowl very soon. Um, in fact, a bit of bit of Blood Bowl news for those of you who care. Um, I'm back in the league. Um, you may remember that I was knocked out in the quarterfinals. Uh, well, the my opponent who knocked me out has actually had to drop out of the league on account of having just become a dad. So, um, <laughs> excuse me, he's kind of actually retrospectively conceded the game we played, which was very, very close. Anyway, it went down to extra time. Um, and I'm back, so I'm through to the semi finals. I've got a game coming up, and uh, yeah, um. Turns out my dream of winning Hot Bob's Season 1 is still alive for now. I'm playing against a very strong team that beat me 2-0 the last time we played. Uh, and it's against the guy who's like odd, odds-on favourite to win the whole league. So we'll see how it goes. I suspect I shan't prevail, but you never know. That's the nice thing about Blood Bowl. Anything can happen. Right. Let's do a little bit more green on this. Yeah, that's a bit better. <laughs> really good assist. Congrats to you and your opponent. Yeah. So what you're saying is that it's coming home. Let's not let's not count our chickens before they're hatched, Will. But I might uh I might turn up to the game with a bucket of Vindaloo. In fact, it's very funny because we've got like a London chapter of Hot Bobs and we've got an Oxford chapter of Hot Bobs because that's where some of the the uh, league players live. And a couple of times gone to Oxford to play games. Um, and 
the last time we went, we went to a pub called the Jericho Tavern, which is like nearest the station, has a very big beer garden with tables that are perfect for Blood Bowl. And it was just nice. It was a fun day out to go play Blood Bowl in a pub, have a pint, eat a burger and come back home. So despite the fact my semi-final opponent and I are both based in London, we're 99% sure we're going to go play it in Oxford. <laughs> we're just going to go to the pub in Oxford from the station. And uh, yeah. Oh, Sarah Lynch says, lovely rustic bib. Thank you, Sarah. I thought you'd approve of this. It's like a canvas number, which is pleasant. Um, I hope you are very well. Mm -mm -mm. Mark Kerwin says, bag of cans is coming home. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, the Sean Bean Big Bag of Cans Award for the most deaths suffered in the league is currently mine to lose because I've had more players die on the pitch than anyone else. Um, I haven't shown you the Sean Bean Big Bag of Cans Award in a little while. Hold on, because I put it on a plinth. Here he is. This is probably the best thing I've ever made. The Sean Bean Big Bag of Cans Award for the most deaths suffered. I need to uh, create a label and sort of put it on there. But um, to be honest, given this is just going to stay with me unless the final is particularly bloody, um, I'm not in any big rush. So there we go. And then you may remember this from another stream. This is the overall winner's trophy which is nice enough. Um, plinths. You can just buy them and put shit on them. It's great fun. Now see what all those sculptors are on about. Like, oh, I've got to make an entire statue, but I do get to put it on a lovely big plinth. I should be allowed to decide what goes on the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. That's my take. I think I'd do a really good job. So how's everyone's preparation for Halloween coming? Do you have any plans? Are you just going to lock the doors and stay inside? Are you going to go out and get quite unquite spooky or what's what's the general what's the general idea? Just another broke nerd says, I would love the trophy to give to my brother. Uh, he's a huge PBR fan. Well, if you go on eBay and search dollhouse cans, there are people who just make replica beer cans for dollhouses. So I got a bunch of PBR ones. I am going to make a second uh, Sean Bean trophy because I got Boromir dying at Amon Hen with the arrows sticking out of him. And I managed to find somebody who made like Carlsberg cans. <laughs> Not Carling, which is what Sean Bean has in the bag of cans in the, the famous picture of Sean Bean with his big bag of cans, but, you know. Uh, yeah, Will's going to land back in the UK on Halloween. Straight to bed. Fair enough. Amanda Smith says, I'm going to dress my dog in a spider costume so the neighbour's kids can have a laugh. That's delightful. Michael Berthelson's done a super chat saying, doing maintenance on a new cheap piece of silver working equipment, brackets roller mill, as the gears are kind of shit and need work. Will be fun when done. Well, that sounds like a project and a half. Good luck with that. I hope you have a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't the faintest idea about fixing anything like that, so rather you than me, but still. Um, Apotheon says, hosting a Halloween party for course mates on the day before Halloween, then recovering on Halloween. Fair. Uh, Martin C says nothing for Halloween as it's my 31st on Monday and despite the hallowed and I despise the all hallowed the hallowed eve as all saints day is better fair enough mm -mm -mm. all right that's enough green for this one oh Lucanthia says, I could go to D&D &D tonight dressed as my character with a six-foot druid staff. Not sure if I've, anyone else will be in costume, though, and it's only my second time playing. I say do it. Why not? If you turn up and no one else is in costume, they'll only wish that they had come in costume. No one's going to react badly for you coming in costume as your character. D 
do it. Do it, do it, do it. A thousand times do it. Bit more green there. Tiny bit more green in there. Trey Zenis on Super Chat saying, my current project is the commute home from work. Sounds like a good project. I hope it comes off well. Uh, the first step is remembering where you live, of course. Uh, and then there's the getting there part. And then the getting inside bit, which some people struggle with sometimes, I think. But uh, I have faith that you'll, you'll absolutely smash it. Hmm. <laughs> well, says if you turn up and nobody else is in costume, I only wish they were in costume, says the Bishop of Gloucester. Listen, that was very different the time I went to a, a, a party without a theme dressed as the Bishop of Gloucester. That's not a fair comparison. Thank you. Also, my friend came and saved my ass coming as somebody searching for the bishop in order to burn him. So really, I had the last laugh. Just about. Let's give this guy a green visory bit. Why not? Make it up as we go along. Ta-da. Arcadia says, running Halloween D&D slash D&D party tomorrow. Brackets, I managed to get tiefling horns and having a quiet actual Halloween weekend. Sounds great. I hope your um, Halloween D&D goes fairly well. We've talked about it before on the channel, of course. I, I find horror a little difficult to do in D&D, but... Um, I'm sure you'll absolutely smash it. Best of luck to you. Change music up. Mmm. Apotheon2000 says, I'm also running my first session of Rev EB tomorrow before moving them on to D&D. Going to be interesting. Good luck. Bizarrely, I was thinking about that game just last night because I've been chatting with Nate Crowley um, over DMs about, about Dune, funnily enough. Um, for those of you not in the know, Rev EB is... Uh, is the, the a nickname for reverse beastmasters, a game where you are a reverse beastmaster who is unable to resist uh, following the commands of animals. Um, you have gone to the zoo in a bizarre twist. Like that seems like the worst place you should go, but you have gone to the zoo and must do um, tasks for the animals. Like when I played uh, with Grant Howitt and. Nate Crowley back when I was working at Dicebreaker. We had to go get some cocaine for some iguanas. We had to stage a production of some kind for um, some giant aquatic animal. I can't really remember that clearly, but um, it was gloriously chaotic. Um, highly recommend that game, uh, which requires the use of sock puppets. So you know it's good. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, is that growing out of your flesh? Oh, it is. Oh, gross. Well done, Grebo Games. These sculpts are horrible. These are sort of these ones that I'm painting, or this one. I uh, see most of the ones I'm painting right now are sort of bigger units, are bigger models rather. They're not just your average lineman. 
uh, and I haven't had a proper good look at them yet, and it turns out they're gross. Will says, honestly, having Grant and Frog on for family friendly channel Dicebreaker was bold. Yeah, we had to just lift the ban on swearing for that entire video, to be honest. Ooh, did you hear my shoulder? Because that's what just went crunch. Delightful. Doom Biscuit says, hi, Skelly Pals. What horrors are we enjoying today? Uh, painting up some Nurgly Blood Bowl models uh, from Grebo Games. Currently, they just look very, very orange, uh, very, very yellow, but we'll soon fix that. Um, currently, I'm just laying down some, some green, but uh, once we get the cream and, uh, like, cream on the armor and then, obviously, sort of browns for the leather bits, these models actually come together very, very quickly, and the final step is just to go wild with... Uh, some of the washes to make the skin look all sort of uh, bruised and uh, and corpulent, which is a bit of fun, isn't it? Nice thing to do of a Tuesday afternoon. But uh, a friend is borrowing these to play with on Wednesday, so I kind of want to get them finished by then. I mean... If, if I don't get them finished, it won't be the end of the world because his opponent is me. Uh, but, you know, it's just nice to hand someone a set of models and be like, here you go. Here's some nicely painted things. Rather than like, oh, here's what I've got. I couldn't be bothered to finish these. <laughs> so, we'll see. It's going to be this Nurgle team versus the Goblin team I'm thinking about running in Season 2 of the Hot Bobs League. A delightful group of Blood Bowl nerds. Rudy Gerber says, They look like cheese-flavoured popcorn and it's making me hungry. Mmm. Yeah, I can see that. God, I haven't had cheese-flavoured popcorn in, in a very long time. What's in? You play down there. Just getting comfy. Right, that's all the green. It's time. Once again, it's reached that phase in the stream. 22 minutes in and we're reaching for the Pale Sand by Vallejo. Kimberly Allen says, Hello everyone, I'm at work right now, so I'm sneak watching. Hope you're all having a good day. I am Kimberly Allen, thank you very much. Sorry Sarah Lynch, Watson Cam is currently being used as my face cam. But uh, if she wakes up later, I'll try and get her into my lap. Um, she's a bit tuckered out right now, so I'll let her. I'll let her. I'll leave her be. Corey Haynes says, "Hey Johnny, I've never read Dune, but how is the Worm movie? No spoilers, please. Um, I really love the book, and I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's a really, really great film." Um, I think your vile, your mileage your mileage your mileage may vary if you haven't seen the book. Um, <laughs> read the book. You've probably seen a copy of the book. Um, and when I say your mi mileage may vary, all I mean is that some people like are a bit like mm, I don't see what the fuss is about because it is um, it it maintains like quite a slow, steady pace. Um, there's a lot of politics to it. Um, but it is fantastic. I I think it's a really rich, interesting world. Um, so, and it is it like whether you're into sort of the slow po politics or not. As a visual spectacle, it's a very very good film. So I would recommend you go see it. But um, basically, my my only caveat is that like a lot of the reason I loved it was because how faithfully it it sort of brought the book to life. So. You know, there you go. You've been told. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. It's quite nice to be wearing a jumper on the stream. It's not been cold enough in this room to do so for ages. And um, certainly never while painting. And I bloody love a good jumper in the autumn. Martin C says, how damp was Timothy Chalamet in it? Well, not very damp at all. He was on Arrakis. A 
tell you who is amazing is um, Rebecca. Crap, I can't remember her surname. But the woman who plays uh, Jessica, Timothy Chalamet's mother in the film, is phenomenally talented. She was amazing. Um, Burrito has done a super chat saying, Hi, Johnny, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, Burrito, it's good to see you. Um, thank you for the super chat, which continues. Uh, any thoughts on Darkest Dungeon 2 being exclusive to Epic for its first year? Are you interested in playing it? I'm very much interested in playing it because I loved the first one. Um, the Epic ex exclusivity thing, like, uh, it doesn't, you know, I'm, it doesn't overly surprise me. Uh, I have an Epic account, so, like, I'm not like, ooh, about it. Uh, I can see why people would be annoyed because if they want to play it on console and have to wait an entire year, that's that's frustrating. But, you know, it's just more publisher business nonsense, isn't it? So, like, I don't really have any strong opinions about it. Probably largely because I'm unaffected by it. But, um, yeah, that's intriguing. I actually didn't realise it was an Epic exclusive. I've kind of uh, not been paying huge amounts of attention to gaming news over the last a little while uh, just because I've had Patreon stuff going on really Rebecca Ferguson thank you Will that's her name just gonna, there we go that's a bit better I'm going to bring the um, f-stop down on the camera so you can see things a bit more clearly okie dokie Gosh, I'm tired. Forgive me if this is an exceptionally chill, chilled hobby stream. But, um, just sort of very autumn sleepy this week, seemingly. Been getting some really good naps in. Had an absolutely slamming nap yesterday. It was really good. In case anyone's keeping... Keeping count. Nice switch says, we're going to the cinema this week, but my partner wants to see Bond before we see Dune. Devoed. I mean, look, all you agreed to do was go to the cinema. You didn't say that you'd go into the same screen as your partner. What's to stop you from just, oops a daisy, I'm... I'm seeing Dune. I don't know what happened there. I'll text you when I'm out, you know? Because, uh, no disrespect to Bond or any of its fans, but fuck that. <laughs> Avi Dammit says, kicking people off cliffs in Deathloop has yet to get old. Same. Uh, it is a, an absolute delight doing that nonsense. I enjoy doing it whenever I get the chance. Although my wife saw me do it recently and was like, what the hell? It's like, eh, it's just a thing you do, you know, it's okay. Now, what is that bit? Is that metal or is that leather? I'm going to say that's leather. That's fine. Nice, which says that's true. Time to pay off War Lad for Duncan Idaho. It's the right choice. It's the right choice. Jason Momoa is very good as Duncan Idaho. Dylan has done another super chat saying, I'm very disappointed. I usually tune in for the edge of your seat non stop action thrill ride. I know. I know. And all you've got is me just. Wielding a paintbrush, occasionally swigging from a can of Guinness, and just talking softly into a high quality microphone. I'm gonna, sh I have to shut down the Patreon really. I can't continue after this, I'll never recover. My image is shattered. It's a bit of escaped flesh. We'll call that. That's what that is. Come back in and do that bit metal. Good, good, good.
Ash Versus says Bob Ross vibes. Thanks. Be all right with that. How, um, because I was only really aware of Bob Ross, like, initially from, um, like, the fact that they watch him in Peep Show. And then sort of, you know, obviously over the last few years, he sort of attained cult status. But obviously, you know, Bob Ross is no longer with us. Was he very popular while alive? Or has a lot of this stuff kind of come on posthumously? Because he's almost become a meme now. You know, like there are Bob Ross board games and stuff, which I find a little bit odd. Um, but I don't know... I don't know whether, you know, that was stuff that was going on while he was alive or whether it's kind of come on since. If anyone happens to be a, a Bob Rossologist. Because he became more popular after his death. Okay. Because that's the thing, like, uh, with the rise of the ASMR movement, and there was a huge legal estate over his battle. But a huge legal battle over his estate when he died, says David. Brodette says, I used to watch Bob Ross with my grandma. Mark Cowan says, apparently there's a whole thing with his family not having the rights to his name and image. Oh, that's upsetting. Because, yeah, I kind of... The little bits I've sort of gleaned, you know, like the fact that he had a perm because he didn't have much money. And, like... He, um, one sec. Um, you know, the fact that my, like, uh, you know, he, he talked about having, you know, going through difficult times sometimes while painting once. He was like, you know, there's the happy times and the sad times. I'm going through a sad time right now. Blah, 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 blah. I kind of, I just got a feeling that's the sort of like, lol, it's Bob Ross. Uh, element to his image was kind of like a little bit exploitative almost it just seemed to always seemed a bit weird to me um, and if the family you know doesn't have control over his his image or you know the rights to his name etc etc that would kind of make sense but either way it's not yeah makes me a little bit sad Just another broke nerd says, uh, I'm in my early 40s. He was on public TV, brackets, PBS, and inspired a whole generation of painters, my mother and grandmother included. That's very cool. Um, just give me one sec. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, the British equivalent would be Tony Hart, I think. Tony Hart was brilliant with the gallery and Morph. I absolutely lived for Morph. I used to watch, I had a VHS of episodes of Morph and I used to watch it religiously as a child. Good. A lot of you did used to watch Bob Ross back in the day while he was alive. That's nice. That makes me feel a bit better. Not that it's about me, but you know what I mean. Right. Let's keep going on this. This is kind of the most boring phase of these models. But we're only 34 minutes into this stream. So with luck, we can make a proper dent in this lot. Oh, there's a little nurgling on this guy. Look, this guy has a little uh, buddy... If you look at his helmet, he's got a little pal just here. That's nice, isn't it? What a delight. Mm -mm -mm. 
Lorian Leaf Lady says, fun ish fact Neil of Art Attack is in a metal band. Neil Buchanan? I didn't know he had it in him. Well, that's impressive. Gosh. Presumably, he's not, you know, performed any songs about Art Attack. Although, I do hope he's hidden sort of good and accessible art tips in his lyrics. If indeed he's the singer, for all we know, he's he's hiding good and accessible art tips in his drums. Nice switch says, I always preferred Mark Spate to Neil Buchanan. Absolutely correct. He was excellent. 80s goth metal, if I recall correctly, says Martin C. Huh. Oh, well, that's a thing. He also had to deal with rumours that he was Banksy. Yeah, um, I remember that. He sort of had to come forward and say, no, it wasn't me. Isn't it widely thought that Banksy is just one of the members of Massive Attack? It was like, it had been rumoured for a while, and then Goldie in an interview was like, yeah, 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 talking about Banksy, and I just mentioned Banksy by name. I mean, whatever. Sodding Banksy. It's very, very tedious. But uh, that at least made me giggle. I do like Massive Attack, though, so, you know, I'm torn. Ash Versus says, fun fact, my partner and I are 95% certain we've seen or met Banksy. Hmm. RV Dammit makes a good point. If he's Banksy, of course he'd deny it. Very true. Very true. I would too if I were Banksy, out of embarrassment. Trite bloody nonsense. <laughs> so there, take that. One thing that really annoys me about Banksy is that when prolific graffiti tagger Tox got caught and um, convicted in 2009, one of the things the judge said in closing remarks was like, and your stuff's not even significant. You're not Banksy. And it's like, are you really, are you really convicting somebody and telling them that, like, the worst thing about them being a criminal is that they're not the criminal that you like. Like, fuck off. Uh, justice for Tox. I miss Tox. My brother and I used to have a game where um, was Tox was a tagger who would just write Tox 04, 05, you know, like whatever the year was, uh, and would tag everywhere. It was so prolific that, like, Transport for London freely admitted that Banksy had Banksy. Tox had tagged places they didn't know how to get to. Um, and uh, like um, my brother and I every new year used to have a, a race to see the first Tox O oh, whatever and whoever saw it first and got photographic evidence would uh, get dinner bought by the other person. It was a great fun game but then uh, it got ruined. And then the judge wheeled out that shit line. You're not even Banksy. Justice for Tox.
Sarah Burke says, Hey Johnny, any recommendations for writing with a deadline? I am struggling a bit with focus and dogs IRL. Um, gosh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm ver I am a very deadline-driven person myself. I kind of uh, just wait until it's quite close to the deadline and then just sort of get it done because I need. I sort of need that motivation. It's a very common thing where people who aren't great with deadlines become journalists because all of the deadlines are short. Um, hmm. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully chat will have some pearls of wisdom for you because I'm quite bad at this sort of thing. Uh, staying focused for a deadline. Yeah, the best I've got is just wait until the stress builds up and you have to do it, which isn't great. Um, Martin C says, did an image search so I wasn't familiar with Tox, and the first result is Banksy's tribute to him. You fucking what? You fucking what? Stay away from Tox, Banksy, you shitlord. Ugh. Great. God, that Tox was good. Anyway. I got a tox print on my wall. So, um, anonymous says, "Right, even if it's shit, you can always edit." David says, Douglas Adams has my favourite quote about deadlines. I love deadlines. I love the whoosh sound they make as they fly past. Not really a tip, but it is enjoyable. Amanda Smith says, break down the chunk, uh, break down the task into manageable chunks if possible. Make rewards for yourself for reaching goals. Yeah, I um, that's a good one, in fairness. It's just sort of try and break it down into manageable bits and make sure that you give yourself time, even if it's just go for a walk or a cup of tea, you know, have a cup of tea or whatever. Um, it can really help make it feel like less of a slog. Also, if you are really, really struggling, I don't know if you've heard of the Pomodoro technique. There are loads of apps that will help you run it. But the idea is you work in 15 minute bursts because like that is a good amount of time for someone to work without their concentration starting to waver. So you commit that for 15 minutes, you're just going to work. You're not going to sort of do a bit and then look at twitter or you know tune out and do anything else you are just going to work solidly for 15 minutes then you get a three minute break which doesn't feel like much but it is quite nice when you get three minutes we can do what you want um like anything you like just you know go um yeah, look at twitter um you know walk around for a bit have a stretch pet an animal whatever and then uh you go back and do another 15 minutes and every fourth period you complete so basically every hour of work you get a 15 minute break um and i actually find it really useful especially when i've got a long project because it means that you know it's it stops being like oh my god i need to write five thousand words it becomes okay i'm going to write words for 15 minutes and that is that's my end point it's 15 minutes and then you have three minutes to do whatever you want and then you're like all right here let's do another 15 minutes and little by little you just sort of like rup, get through it uh sarah says thanks chat thanks johnny all in caps with heart emojis so i assume this is working or at least proving vaguely helpful so Tom Chapman says, I now write in Comic Sans because it kills my writer's block for some reason. Unfortunately, I did submit a paper to my law professor in Comic Sans. <laughs> I can see why it would work, though, for the writing bit. It's meant to be very easily legible, you know. Um, like, the history of it is actually kind of interesting before, obviously, it, it just became a weird, trite font. Um... And it's actually kind of a measure of its success that it did become so popular... Um, 
and then overused and sort of just became a bit of a joke. And uh, every, everyone loves dunking on Comic Sans because it's really fun to do. Um, but the history of the font is actually quite interesting. Loki Akai has um, done a super chat saying, add some spice to walk without rhythm pathway in your beer garden. Thank you very much, Loki Akai. I will try and walk without rhythm. You won't attract the worm. Get in there. Uh, this is the fourth of five. No, that's not right. Oh, we're not getting there. This is only the third model I'm doing the cream on. It's taking longer than I anticipated, but that's all right. We've got, we've got all afternoon and evening. Sarah Burke says, oh my god, Comic Sans actually helps. Excuse me, I will be a typing fiend for a minute. Do it, Sarah. Do you you just absolutely smash those keys. Who knew? Maybe Comic Sans is you know, maybe Comic Sans can save us all. It's not just for notices in the doctor's office anymore. Okay. There we go. More cream. Cream, cream, cream. Oops, sorry, I was painting out of sight then again, wasn't I? Corey Haynes says, Hey Johnny, have you seen Ted Lasso? As someone who thinks football is meh, it's actually incredible, and it has Claire de Lune in it, which I love. I haven't seen Ted Lasso. I have heard very good things, but to be honest with you, I'm not very good at watching series. Um, uh, so it's, it's quite low down on my list, to be honest. I'm sure it is great. I just haven't I haven't had any inclination to give it a go. I might in the future, but I wouldn't wouldn't hold your breath. Um, I am just truly awful at watching things. I watched two episodes, the first two episodes of The Mandalorian about a month ago, and I, you know what? I clapped myself on the back. I was like, "Well done." That's a cultural achievement for me, frankly. Oh, my shoulder's really giving me attitude today. Oy, oy, oy. William Ryan says, well, Johnny, how's yourself? I'm all right, thank you. I'm quite tired at the moment. Um, but not in an unpleasant way, just kind of in like a cosy, could do with a nap sort of way. So I'm just lightly daubing paint onto some horrible, horrible Blood Bowl men. Because I thought, it's October, why don't I work on something nasty for people to um, quote-unquote enjoy? Although, I'll show you the kit bash I'm doing at the minute. Because, um, as you might know, the team I'm playing at the moment in um, the Blood Bowl League I'm a part of, the Hot Bobs League, um, I'm running a dwarf team, and I've got a match coming up. Because um, I'm actually in the bloody semi-finals. Uh, and I think I'm going to have enough money to um, to induce Grombrindal, the uh, the white dwarf. But because my team is um, a character and overlords team, i.e. the sky dwarves who live up um, in the ether and mine clouds of ether of gold, I kit bashed. Well, I kit bashed my whole team, but I've kit bashed 
the white dwarf to have an engine, and then I used green stuff to make a jet plume. So he's kind of like... Uh, it's going to be flying about the pitch. This is wildly impractical for playing Blood Bowl, but uh, I bought the Grombrindale model, and I talked to my friend. I was like, I'm wondering how I can make him look uh, more, uh, you know, more Caradron. And they said, well, why don't you stick an engine on him? And I thought, that is so brilliant. So this is going to be my project after this team is done. Got to get this done by the 10th of November. That's when my match is. So I'm pretty confident I can do it. But yeah, very excited about this. Um, it is a good giggle. Trey Zen has done a super chat saying, Project Commute Home Complete, now for Project Eat Dinner. You are smashing out these projects. It's amazing. Oh, amazing. Chaos says, um, I'm cooking a delicious sweet potato katsu curry before heading out to see Ed Gamble do stand-up this evening. The first night out for the wife and I in more than five years. Wow. That sounds like great fun. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time. And I hope Ed Gamble uh, asks you if you want to hang out afterwards. As long, only as long as you'd like to. If you'd rather get home, I, you know, I understand that and so will Ed Gamble. But I hope you have a great time, is, is what I'm saying here. Ah, oh, yes, this is the one I was painting. Craig Heath uh, says, Afternoon all. Sorry I'm late. How's things? I take it the hand has healed up nicely now, Johnny. It's getting there. It's, it's just over halfway. So it's still, still sort of peeling in places. It needs a bit of a touch-up. But yeah, uh, it'll be six weeks before it's fully healed. So another... Oh, just two weeks, actually. Blimey, that took... That uh, time flies, huh? But yeah, it's um, it's going on nicely. Thank you very much for asking. Get in there with this. Need to get a bit more cream on the palette. I mean, Little says, Project, go back to my Animal Crossing island and clean it up after not being to see my villagers since they th uh, threw me my birthday party in April. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it can't be long now to wait. It's, you know, maybe, what, two weeks until the new Animal Crossing stuff lands? I've seen an awful lot of people saying that they're going and frantically redoing their island, like sculpting and changing it for, for the update. And that throws me a little bit. I mean, okay, I'll, for context, I didn't do much work to my island on the whole. I don't really like laying paths and stuff, so I didn't I didn't go as heavily into customising it as other people did. I just put some objects I liked around the place. And generally speaking, I've just mostly got fruit trees because I like them. But the number of people who are like, I've got so much work to do before I get a coffee shop. And it's like, I don't... I don't understand that impulse. No disrespect to them, but I'm like, the coffee shop's going to be in the museum, and I love Brewster. Brewster's one of my favourites, but I don't understand how that translates into... Oh, I suppose there's... You can grow vegetables. There you go, yeah. Will says, uh, I've got to clean out space for my farmland. I suppose, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually, because I've, I've got space. I just need to hack down some trees, I guess. But, um... Yeah, Lavash says, uh, when you say cream, you mean pale sand, right? I do, pale sand from Vallejo. It is, it's a great paint. I like it a lot. Doesn't taste great, but for everything else, it's a dream. And that's, that's what matters at the end of all things. Oliver Morgan says, today is the first day I have off in what feels like forever. So happy to wake up to a painting stream. Exactly the chill I need. Hello, hello. I'm very happy to, to provide you with a painting stream on this, your first day off in what feels like forever. I hope you have a really restful and joyful day. But it sounds like you've earned one. Mm -mm -mm. Oops, that was a bit clumsy, but it's fine, because I'm going to go back over that bit anyway. Uh, 
Craig Keith says, how did it feel getting back to MCM? It was, you know what? It was really lovely, actually. Um, I was a little bit nervous that we'd have a small audience because um, it was literally the last thing on the last day, our live show. It was 3 till 5 p.m. on Sunday when um, Sunday, you know, is the last day of the show, which closes at 5. So I was like, no one's going to show up to this. The audience was absolutely packed and everyone was really into it, which was great. It was really, really nice. Um, uh, yeah, we just had a had a really chill time. Um, and then I went to go pick up the pig, who I had very cleverly stashed at my friend's brewery while he was working there on Sunday. So I picked up the dog and immediately had a pint, which was great because I... I was very full of adrenaline, but yeah, no, the show was the show was great. Um, I was amazed by the numbers of people uh, at the XL to the point where I felt a little bit overwhelmed um, because I, you know, my brain is now wired to just equate that many people with super spreader event. But I think it's, um, uh, I mean, a I, I was very careful and uh, I got away without catching COVID, as far as I'm aware, knock on wood, but. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was lovely, and um, I didn't get to speak to them at the end. I sort of said hello on I think Twitter or Instagram. I forget, but uh, there was somebody cosplaying as the Joyful Damnation, like full on cardboard pirate ship around their body, with uh, little cutouts of the Oxventurers on deck. It was amazing. It was so funny. Uh, I was a big big fan. So yeah, it was a it was a joyous joyous time. It's very good. William Ryan says, this painting stream just reminds me I need to finish off my Fallen Dark Angels and start on my Chaos Space Marines. Yes, please. That sounds like a nice project. Okay. There we go. One more model to do cream, and then it is just a bit of metal. Um... A bit of leather and then we're going to get into shading and then it's just a quick highlight slap weird colors on the skin and we can call these suckers done we might even get cracking on a second batch before this stream is out what a what a triumph that would be let's yeah we can probably do it let's not count our chickens just yet but with three more hours to go of this i think there's a good chance <sighs> Kimberly Allen says, Hey Johnny, I've been playing Dishonored 2 as well, and I just want you to know that watching you play is delightful, especially since I'm in the middle of my own ghost run. Well, someone's skilled enough to do a ghost run. <laughs> I can't even... I can't last ten seconds in that game without being spotted. A ghost run is completely beyond me. I think I would like to, to play it again, probably in my own, well, certainly in my own time, and do a clean hands run and kill absolutely no one. You know, like if I kill anyone, I reset the level sort of deal. Um, because, my goodness, no spoilers for those who haven't seen the more recent episodes of Dishonored 2, obviously, but I'm very talented at accidentally wiping people off the face of the earth. Like, it's becoming quite an alarming skill that I just have. So if I can conquer that, that'd be great. Reminds me, actually, we're sort of reaching the end of the Dishonored 2 playthrough. We should really uh, start talking about what the community wants me to play next. Doom Biscuit says, my dishonoured runs all ended in a no one can raise the alarm if there's no one to raise the alarm. Yes, that sounds about right. Corin Malayam says, I'm so proud of my clean hands ghost run. I would be. There are some bits of that game, like, I'll be playing and I'm like, I do not know how anyone does this without being spotted. It's remarkable. Well done, all of you, frankly. But, you know, it's just not the way I play, so. 
It's okay. <sighs> Tom Chapman says no bodies to notice versus nobody to notice the bodies. That's just it, isn't it? That's the dichotomy. Which player, which type of dishonored player are you? <laughs> So I think I'm going to do it, um, like to get all the missions done and see the end of the game. I believe it's just going to be ten episodes. Uh, sorry, nine episodes of Dishonored Two, but I'm going to do a tenth where we just let loose, and I'm going to basically see how long I can record for on the day. It won't be super super long, but I'm going to switch to Corvo, start a new save file, and just try and speed run it on ultra high chaos, uh, just to just to feel what it's like, you know. Spent all this time not trying not to kill anyone. What happens if we did it on purpose? I'd probably be shit at it. <laughs> uh, Dylan has done another super chat. Saw you enjoying brackets with swearing Hollow Knight. Made me wonder if you've played the Ori games. Some of my favourites. I have. I never completed. I've only played the first one. I never completed it. It's very, very good. I like it a lot. Um, it's just like, it's a lovely aesthetic and a sort of a lovely, lovely vibe to it, isn't it? I haven't played God, I haven't played that in ages actually. I should go back to it. That might be a fun stream sometime. Everyone was really into Hollow Knight. Like I knew I knew it was a popular game. I didn't realise people loved it that much. So I'll definitely be streaming that again soon. Just because everyone was so keen on it. What can I say? What the people want, I will try and provide to the best of my ability. <laughs> Please see also low chaos running dishonored too. Doom Biscuit says the Corvo I am a tornado of chaos run is best run. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Timothy Thomas has done a super chat saying, Hey John, I just wanted to say seeing you stream Hades got me to buy it, and I finally beat Theseus and the Minotaur. Yes. Destroy those jerks. I actually really like the Minotaur, but Theseus is such a ding dong. He's a real prick. So I'm glad you whomped him. I haven't played uh, Dead Cells in ages, actually. Fucking Theseus. It's, um... I don't like that boss fight very much. And it's not just because it's difficult. It's just kind of like... I don't know. It's, uh... I think of all the boss fights, probably the weakest one in in Hades. The quality level of the game overall is astonishing, but I just don't. I just don't like. I don't like doing that fight, and I don't like facing off against. I don't like interacting with those characters. So it's it's you know, it's a no win situation for me unless I kill them, in which case there's you know relief and a win and a feeling of triumph. But still, <laughs> my uh, my screen is just lit up with. Uh, chat messages that are uh, being held for review shut up Theseus, Theseus is a dick yes fuck Theseus Theseus is a pillock <laughs> oh in Felix Roar actually says uh, Theseus is a pillock in every version of anything to do with Greek mythology and he deserves to be ground into the dirt for eternity there you go, I mean Sisyphus in Hades, what a nice guy, lovely absolutely delightful That's right, it's Asterius. Thank you, Josephine of, uh, of Underberg. Sorry, excuse me. What is that? Is that like a hand wrap? Yes, it is. Okay, we'll paint that in silver. Hang on a sec. I need to send a quick message.
Ooh, Avi Dammit says, time to start using Project Puff Pizza, which is using puff pastry for a pizza base. Hello. Oh, I actually have some pastry in the fridge I need to use up. I'll try and make some tartlets or something. Not the healthiest of dinners, but why not want that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Ash Versus says, heading offline to go pick up a vintage JVC component hi-fi from the early 80s. Next restoration project, ahoy. That sounds brilliant. Please say hello to the early 80s for me. Please tell my parents that having a second child is a good idea. If you see them, anyway. Don't freak them out. Maybe just leave them alone, actually. They'll work it out. It's fine. Enjoy the hi-fi. Okay, that's that done. We're almost nearly getting there. <laughs> Shamari Wallace says, Sisyphus is lovely. He's a bit repetitive, though. Wee, 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 wee. Very good. Um, Visible Wizard says, I don't normally comment much, but these streams are my regular dopamine recharge and mental health relaxation. I'm very glad, Visible Wizard. Of all of the wizards on the visible spectrum, you are one of my favourites. Um, and yeah, I really like doing these streams, to be honest. It's nice. Just sort of a chill time. And also it means that, like... Damn it, I missed a bit of cream. Uh, it means that, sort of, during the week, I don't find myself being like, mm, I should find time, really need to sit down and hobby. It means that I get hobby time guaranteed every week. Uh, and anything else I do is like a lovely bonus and I can just enjoy it that way because I am just doing it for the enjoyment rather than feeling like I need to crack on with a project, which is um, not something that, sh you know, we should experience with our hobbies and our leisure time. They should just be hobbies and they should just be for fun. But um, thanks to some of that marvellous um, capitalism that everyone's internalised. I think we kind of so often feel like we need to be productive even in our leisure time. That we sort of feel guilty if we're not properly on top of it all the time. When it's you know, it's time we should be using to rest. So yeah, I bloody love these streams. They're good fun. Burrito's done another super chat. Uh this super chat reads I have to say it, Hades is a gorgeous game, but as a disabled gamer, I have huge issues with the two boss slash final boss fight and its mandated replayability. It's downright painful and tiring and repetitive. Yeah, that's that's a sort of a problem that comes with the territory of that sort of genre, isn't it? That it's um, it's very taxing on disabled gamers. I know there is a god mode, but you know that also. Um, Like, it's uh, if that feels like a temporary, well, not a temporary fix. It feels like a, a fix to a, a one instance of a larger systemic problem. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Will says, speaking of how they should just be for fun, will we have another problem project stream soon? Yes, actually. Um. Uh. Having had a very lovely chat about the uh, the uh, Stubborn Project stream at MCM Comic Con, actually, uh, I've decided, yeah, I'm going to do probably next Monday because uh, it won't be won't be October anymore. Because obviously, all October I was like, oh, pain Halloween adjacent things. Um, hence today's project. But yes, let's do that. Um, I should probably oh, I should crack on with the the big enormous ship, shouldn't I? Yeah, next Monday, everybody. We're calling it now. I will remind you, but it's another Stubborn Project stream. So, dig out the cross-stitch you've been neglecting, or the models you've been avoiding working on, um, or literally anything. Is there something you've been putting off that you, you know you're going to hate doing? Uh, join us next Monday from 4pm BST. 
because we're all going to be in the same boat and we can get through it together. We'll just gently encourage one another to keep going and we'll share our successes and we can air our frustrations in a zero judgment scenario. Uh, and hopefully we can make some some uh, progress on things that on paper we want to do. But in actuality, we find we're a bit stuck on. Um, it certainly helped me last time. I painted 20 clan rats and I had a great time doing it. Uh, so yeah, next Monday, bring something you keep banging your head against and your A game, and we'll we'll bloody well dispense some hobbying justice. It was almost like a wrestling promo. <laughs> Don't think I'd make much of a wrestler to be honest, but. There we go. Any more silver? Yes, the helmet's on this guy. That's right. Neatly does it. Mrs. G says, what would your wrestler name be? Gosh, I don't know. Because, like, obviously a lot of people now just wrestle under their own names. Or, you know, assumed names. But they wrestle under just first name, last name. You know, like, uh, uh, what's he called? John Cena. No, he said Michael Sarah. John Cena. And... Dave Batista and you know that sort of thing and it's fun but I also I, you know when I was a kid I loved all the characters and my favourite wrestler of all time was Cactus Jack uh, you know I liked Mankind and everything but when he was Cactus Jack it blew my bloody mind so it would definitely be a character one of my favourites that I ever saw was actually at Lucha Britannia when they were wrestling in the Resistance Gallery uh, in Bethnal Green, which is now closed. But they had a character called the Piranha, who was wearing like a Mexican wrestler's style mask, but with a... Did they have a fin? No, they didn't. But I think they wore contacts that made them look a bit like Rey Mysterio, like... Um, but their whole thing was they would... They would just put their hand on their head and go... Yeah! And that was like their gimmick. And they were a heel. This is one time they slammed somebody into the mat and then just ran around the ring at the at the crowd being like, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, so something like that. Um, but what? But what? I don't know. This is tricky. Um... I'll have to workshop it, cut some promos and see. Chain mail. Toby Doak has done a super chat saying, looking forward to watching this from the beginning as a way to relax after working on my birthday. Your content is super relaxing to listening uh, to listen to, so thanks. Thank you very much for the super chat. And may I also say a very happy birthday to you. I'm sorry you were working it, but hopefully your shift passed without incident and uh, was as enjoyable as these things can be. Um, so yeah, and... You know, once you get back to this stage in uh, the stream, hello again. Thank you again for the super chat. And it, once again, accept my uh, my congratulations on yet another successful trip around the sun. Let's do another one, shall we? Is that metal? Nah. Mm, yes, it is now. Yeah, 
Weekendia says, Andy Farron is a wrestler. You could talk to him about your wrestling gimmick. Well, actually, he helped me come up with a roller derby name once, but I, unfortunately it was sort of taken. Uh, but it was Edgar Allan Pow, which I actually um, used when we recorded a Let's Play of um, Worldwide Wrestling at Dicebreaker just, just before the country went into lockdown. So, uh, yeah, I think that would work. I could turn the Bishop of Gloucester into a wrestling persona. Uh, oh, I don't... I mean, would that technique... Would that be disrespectful? No more disrespectful than dressing up as the Bishop of Gloucester uh, during a party, I suppose. Give that a go, Maybe. But then I'd have to find a new bit to do for my friend's party because um, that same friend had a birthday party um, over Gather, the sort of weird sort of Zoom meets Habbo Hotel video platform. And uh, I went as the Bishop of Gloucester because I thought it was funny because obviously I did. Um so kind of whenever he has a party, I try and go as the Bishop of Gloucester now. But um, I'd have to find a new gimmick because otherwise they'd be like, why is Johnny come as their wrestling persona? We'll, we'll work on it. It's okay. I mean, I've, I've no real aspiration of becoming a wrestler, to be honest with you. So we've got all the time in the world to think about it. Severus Darkmall says, how do you all finally escape the clutches of work for the day? It um, It is very funny picturing somebody called Severus Darkmall having to work a job, just sat there typing on a keyboard in like full plate armor with enormous pauldrons. Type, 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 I'm Severus Darkmall. Here are those files you requested, etc., etc. Metallics. Okay, this guy's looking all right. Mostly. Onwards. My cat is typing this, says, I have typed in plate armour. It isn't very ergonomic. I can imagine, especially since you're a cat. How does that even happen, my cat is typing this? And how is your cat not world famous? Ah, oh, Becky West says, finally able to catch the chill painting stream. You've inspired me to start painting my own minis. That's absolutely wonderful. Welcome to the hobby. Um, I hope you're having a bloody great time with it. What are you painting? Most importantly... <sighs> okay. A couple of weird metal rivets in this one. Oh, batch painting. You're kind of boring, but effective. West Coast Weaver says, closest I've come in accidentally type it is accidentally trying to type with a thimble on. Didn't work very well. <laughs> that is... Uh... It's the same school of um, of typing as full plate armor, isn't it?
Okay, is that all the metal on you? So I haven't glued these models down onto their bases, as you may have been able to tell from the fact that one just fell off. Um, but it seems to be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Good, good, good. Oops, says chat. Correct. <laughs> Severus Dartmoor says, suddenly feel the need to create a tabaxi paladin for a D&D &D game. Yep, 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 yep. I can see that. I can see that working very well. I do bloody love a tabaxi, as I believe is well documented at this point. Um, yeah, I think that's this one done for metals. Now, how about you? There's a bit of chain on you, so we'll slap some paint on that. All right. What is that? Is that a loop of intestine? It is a loop of intestine. Good times. Had by all. Perfectly normal thing to say on a Tuesday afternoon while streaming on the internet. I mean, these are meant to be sort of horrible, plague-ridden warriors of pestilence, so the odd gut loop is to be expected, I suppose. There we go. It'll become clearer later when I paint it. Okay, that's that. Yep, okay. So. Oh yeah, now we've just got to do the brown for the leather. And then we'll be able to shade the armour and stuff. Becky West says, hope you have the guts to paint them intestines. Becky, firstly, that was, actually that was quite a good pun. Secondly, I don't have to invoke the name of the evil one in order for you to know that I have the guts to paint intestines. The less said on the subject, the better for all of us, I think. Right, here we go. Kimberly Allen says, I've tuned back into intestine talk, lol. Welcome back, Kimberly. Yeah, that's right, chat. You don't want you don't want me to invoke the name of the evil one. Of course, chat is now just asking. Yep. The model that must not be named. Apart from if you're Bao1156, Corey Omelam, Joshua Wood, or Dylan Armadek who have all just trotted out the name immediately, without a second's hesitation. Yasmin Wari joins the club as well. I was indeed referring to 2020 The Bear, and you know the rules, chat. If 2020 The Bear gets mentioned, 2020 The Bear gets shown. If you don't want to see it, just look away now. I'm going to clean this brush, and then here it comes. Dylan Armadex says, I'll have you know, I had one full second of hesitation. Here we go. Is 2020 the bear? Yep. Good times. And Felix Soror says, please give me an all clear so I can uncover my eyes. I have put the bear away. Uh, I'm now just going to, there we go, refocus. Uh, Tony Doak has done a, a super sticker. It is uh, of everybody's favourite anthropomorphised pear, who, um, as, you, as you know, being, being a pear, it has a sort of narrower top and a rounded bottom, and is a nice, pleasant, sort of, actually turquoise 
green, really. Uh, they're wearing a sports headband. It's white with a red stripe in the center. And there is uh, a block of text behind it just saying thank you. And um, in in some sort of genuflection of gratitude, uh, the pair uh, puts his hands together and then sort of does a bow, closing its eyes and smiling. Um, thank you very much, Tiny Doug, for the, the superb sticker. Christopher Needham says, when are we getting the even more accursed 2021 The Bear? I don't think I'm going to go looking for 2021 The Bear. Severus Dartmouth says, 2020 The Pair. Oh, no. Um, Nick Jeffries is on Super Chat saying, Hi, Johnny. I'm listening to you while waiting for the bus, and I'm imagining De Niro with cat ears in the D&D film Tabaxi Driver. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That was good. Okie dokie. Right. Oh, yeah. We're painting... Leather. I remember now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here we go. Who dares message me? Paint some more leather. One sec. Right, 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 right. What keyboard are you using, Johnny? It's a Corsair clickety clicky click click one that lights up. <laughs> um, Thomas Tomasi says, Johnny types fast, eh? 123 words a minute. I grew up 
playing Mario Teaches Typing, and then I had no friends living near me, so MSN Messenger was a pillar of my existence, and then uh, I did an essay subject to university and became a journalist. <laughs> kind of comes with the territory. But um, I'm not not proud of it. I enjoy typing the quick words. And I did also play uh, Typing of the Dead Overkill, but the less said about that game, the better. That was a disastrous late to the party during my time at Eurogamer. Jack Wood says that late to the party was a work of incredibly cursed art. Yeah. Aiden Folk says I need to be able to take notes and I was thinking if I learned shorthand I was thinking of learning shorthand. Did you have to do that as a journalist? No. Um I didn't actually study journalism, which is sort of where you learn shorthand. Um I did English literature and language. Um to be honest, there's only one person I know who can do shorthand, and it's Wesley Inpool. Um uh, I'm sure it's incredibly useful, but I've never, I've never given it a go. Kind of wish I could, but um, the, you know, the times during which I have to take rapid notes, and I'm not either typing on a keyboard or using my thumbs on a phone, which I'm also, you know, quick enough for. It's um, probably wouldn't, I wouldn't use it enough to justify learning it, but you know. But then you could write a diary in your own shorthand, a shorthand of your own devising, you know, like um, like Mina Harker in uh, Dracula. She knows shorthand because she's a badass. i tell you what really blew my mind a while ago was seeing a video of somebody explaining how to use a court stenographer's machine. Done it again. Um, and just how the buttons work to make different... Th it's... Because it's only... It's not a full keyboard, obviously. It's like 16 buttons or something, and they have like... I just... I don't know how they work. Really, they're a mystery, but... Um, a video I saw where someone was explaining it was fascinating. <laughs> the nice which says I'm still getting my head around longhand, to be honest. Mate, genuinely, same. I, uh, I've been writing, sort of doing some creative writing just for myself recently. Um, and, uh, oh God, it's like a puzzle. Like, I know what I'm trying to say, but trying to find the the way I want to say it it's so difficult it is a yeah a challenge shall we say Ugh. 
Anonymous says, I read recently about some court stenographer who was disgruntled. They needed to redo a part of a trial for some reason, only to discover that the court records was just, I'm so bored over and over. What? That's... Surely they could be prosecuted for that, right? Jack Wood says, shorthand is a core part of the NCTJ, but generally only comes into use with journalists who do hard news. Most of the people I know in magazine journalism never find a need for it. There we go. Okay, here we go. I've been struggling to make sense of the straps going around these models and their waist, and I've just realized I think it's because part of the straps are meant to be going under their skin, like their arm has been grafted onto their very bones, which is horrific. Sorry, I keep typing. Trey Zen is another super chat saying, Project dinner done, now time for Project Watch stream and end this joke before people get fed up with it. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat, all the same, Trey Zen. Um, I hope you have a nice relaxing time watching. Can we get a 2021 The Boar? Seems perfect for this channel. I will try and get a, um, a nice model to paint up. 2020, 2021 The Boar. So 2021 has been a better year. It doesn't have to be as horrifying as the model that should, um, uh, that should not be named. time is it 20 to 6 all right doing we're keeping we're on doing good time on these models you'll notice you'll see once i've shaded them that the rest of it actually comes together pretty quickly the highlights are really really fast the skin is a super slapdash and then we'll be on to the next thing which will be fun because it'll probably just be this lot again That or I can try and glue together some models, but I really don't want to do that because they are old hammer skeletons. Uh, they're re reprints of um, a skeleton Blood Bowl team Warhammer put out 20 years ago, and oh my god, they're a pain to assemble. I hate them. Oh no, I'm painting that leather, but I already painted it metal. Stop that shit right away. Any more? Yes. Strap work. There we go. Okay. 
They're not Hammer Skellies, Minna L, no. Although, it would be very easy to paint up an army of 60 skeletons. It's like an irksomely big gift to Luke. <laughs> skeletons are really easy to paint up. Just paint them, paint them white, shade them really heavily with brown, and then highlight the bones again. It's good fun. Rubs and Obsolete says, Did you ever decide on a costume for Halloween, Johnny? Yes, I did. I got myself a spooky-looking jacket. Um, I'm going to sort of uh, put some classic white face makeup on and sort of really uh, darken uh, the sockets of my eyes. Um, and then I've got five inflatable hammers. I'm going to strap two of them to my legs, one of them to my back, and I'm going to wield the other two because I'm going as hammer horror. So that should be fun. Um, I'm quite looking forward to it. The nice switch just says, oh God. So I think, I think it's a successful costume. Look, listen, my eyes are Mark Cohen says you deserve this community. Right, look. My eyes are quite sunk in my skull. Like, there are ways back in here. So I've got a lot to work with around here, you know? These are these things are deep set. So gonna gonna go all like whoa, like Victorian spooky, but with the hammers. The nice switch says on a scale of one to obnoxious, how chuffed were you when you thought that up? You don't even need to ask, do you? Come on. Of course I was chuffed. Obnoxiously chuffed. Oops. Darth Monk has done a super chat saying my D&D &D players finally learned that the kobold jester mascot their fighter is dating is the BBEG manipulating the kingdom into ruin. I shall celebrate by throwing money at my favourite online DM. Thank you very much, Darth Monk. It's nice to see you in the chat. Uh, I hope you are very well. That sounds absolutely incredible. Also... Ouch. Someone's dating the BBEG? That's, um... Yeah, well done with uh, for that, frankly. That must hurt for the player. Or their character, rather. Masterfully done. To hoodwink somebody like that is no easy thing. Oop. Oops. It's a bit watery now. That's better. Little strapo on the chest. Which disappears into the skin again. Vaguely horrifying. Kim Lee Allen says, uh, forgive me for being dense, but what is BBEG? It's Big Bad Evil Guy. Uh, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I only realised it was Big Bad Evil Guy very, very recently. Because uh, I always thought it was Big Bad End Guy. <laughs> And when I say I recently, I mean two minutes ago. <laughs> so there we go. Oh, Joshua would describe this, this model as like a string wrapped ham. That's horrible. Thank you so much for that mental image.
some of you surprised that I didn't know what BBEG really stood for. There we go. Yeah, the Indomitable X says, I always thought BBEG meant big bad end game. That's, yeah, that's it. Big bad end game, not big bad end, big bad end guy. Either way. Whoops. Trezen has done uh, <laughs> a super chat saying, I use big bad evil git as it's more gender neutral. Very nice. Yeah, I, it really bothers me that guys is used so commonly as a gender neutral term because I just don't think it is gender neutral. I could bang on about that for ages and argue the toss about it, but uh, I shan't. That's just, that was just an aside. Okie dokie. Right. Got a little bit more to do on the basing, and then it's shade time, and then we can just get a highlight in. Sven Hanneman says, just popping in from the family holiday off Plague Island. So hello from Holland for a change. Hello. What's it like being in a rational part of the world? I hope it's nice. If you could bring us back some of that anything, that would be really good, actually. Doesn't really matter what you bring back. I assume we'll be running short of it at some point, so... Apart from turfs and racists, seemingly. Okay. Ah, oh, wonderful. Your arm is covering most of your chest, so I don't have to paint any more straps around your midriff. Tremendous. Let's just do these ones around the back of your knees. REC says, bring back some common decency, please. Which is funny, because that's what all the uh, the nasty people trying to ruin the country are saying. Anonymous says the bad, bad, bad part about being rational is the absence of pie. Very good. Very good. Quite hungry, actually. What do I want for dinner? A weird craving for mushy peas. Just keeping you updated on the inane nonsense rattling around my skull. Hope you're all enjoying it. That's a bit of metal I missed, so let's tidy that up. And then I think it's time to shade. Jack Wood says, uh, mushy peas are very good, which is absolutely correct. Um, thus, further cementing Jack Wood's reputation as a good part of this community. In case anyone were keeping score. That makes it sound like I'm ranking all of you. I'm, I'm not, don't worry. All right. Mm 
<laughs> Mark Cohen says, no, you've started. Only fair to rank every one of us individually now. Oh, no. Craig, he says, slightly random aside, what is your stance for accents slash fantasy voices? You mean like, um... How do I feel about using them in game? I am fine with... So, I do I do, do voices, and part of that, when I'm role-playing, playing NPCs, um, it does include, include accents. However, I only ever do um like i try to keep it to regional uk accents um i'll occasionally do french and um you know i can do uh, like uh, like i'll do like american or sometimes like um you know scandinavian accents etc cetera, etc cetera. um i guess w what i'm trying to find the words to say is that i do n not do any accents uh that are of other races like um you know the the accents i do are from predominantly like uh, white population countries i um i think it is offensive and entirely not my place to do accents from like other cultures like if i was like now i shall make this character chinese you know for example that's not to say i won't feature npcs that are of a different um ethnicity to me but um i will just speak with an like my normal voice for them or just not I'll, I'll keep an english accent for them because i do not want to um be racist <laughs> there we go that's yeah um so fantasy voices and accents uh they're good when they aren't racist that's my official stance on them um there it is to be honest i've sometimes been a bit like should i stop doing like european accents as well um but i kind of feel like there's enough sort of gentle ribbing between the nations of europe that it can be done without being problematic. That's not to say that it is never problematic to do those accents. There we go. Just another broke nerd says, Johnny's American accent is pretty spot on, lol. Which is not something I've ever heard before in my life. Normally people tell me my American accent is garbage, so thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Dylan Armadak says, it is not spot on. It is fun. All right. Uh, Quosin, I think I've said that right, has done a super chat saying, love you, Johnny. Wish I could give you more. Um, also, just because I love your pronunciation of it, squirrel. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is very, very kind. I, I hope I said squirrel in the way you were hoping me to say, hoping I would say squirrel. Corio Malayam says, I don't think your American accent is garbage, but where is it supposed to be from? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. Um, I'm certainly not aiming for a specific region, because that would be terrifying. Um, the Ghost of Laura Palmer says American accents are very regional, so there's a lot of American accents, you know. Yes, I mean, I guess there is a kind of generic catch-all American accent. <laughs> that I do that it's just sort of cribbed from the telly so I guess it would be I guess it you know it might even be sort of a neutral Californian because that lots of things are filmed out there um but like it, bizarrely it's actually easier for English people to try and do a southern drawl because the vowels are more like our own um uh i don't know I, i'm extremely keen not to speak about accents right now as if i'm any form of authority um zega genesis says no american midwest oh okay there we go arcadia says how do you stop one accent accidentally turning into another often i can't so um uh 
yeah, I just try, I just hope, <laughs> against hope it doesn't happen. Tom Chapman's on Super Chat saying, as an Irishman, I must now request an Irish accent. Later, if you have it. I, tr I you know what? Um, I avoid doing Irish accents uh, because, um, number one, I've spent many, many years working with Aoife Wilson, who uh, does not enjoy it when people do Irish accents. Um, and I just learned that it's not especially funny. Well, I didn't learn. Like, I, I knew already, but it was really shown to me how un unfunny it is when an English person does an Irish accent as an Irish person. And also... I just feel like Irish people have had enough shit off the English. <laughs> like, um, you know, like, I just don't feel like, sorry, I'm trying to find the right shade for these models. Um, with, with all apologies, I just don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really feel like I'm, I'm, contributing positively to the world if I try and do an Irish accent. So uh, if it's all right with you, I won't do one. Where is the fucking... This is the problem with storing all of your paints in a shoebox. Grax glass, flesh, known. Okay. Bollocks. Where's it gone? Bear with me one sec, chat, while I try and find the Seraphim Sepia. It was right here all along. Good, good, good. Just another broke nerd says, that's one big ass shoe box. That's a boot box it's from Boots. <laughs> Alyssa says, my Northern Irish partner gave that statement a thumbs up. Cool. Um, good. I'm, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry about the English, basically. And they said swigging on a Guinness. The ghost of Laura Palmer says, I did do a very good gnome voice one time by holding my nose closed the entire time. That was everyone's favourite. It's always those ones that people really get get caught up on. So, like, the thing is, there are loads of ways to differentiate a voice from your natural speaking voice or from a different, you know, a, you know any other NPC you have without resorting to doing accents. Because, obviously, this is sort of what my voice is like when I'm just speaking normally, but... Uh, if I pitch it up, it sounds very different. Like, um, generally speaking, if I'm doing, um, if I'm like presenting to camera, I'll be like, hello, and it goes up a bit because um, it sounds a bit more peppy and because uh, it's not so bassy, it's sort of just, you know, like, no, 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 no. But you can pitch it further down. You can talk at different speeds because somebody talking like this sounds very different to someone who puts in a lot more effort and pace when they're talking, etc., etc., You can differentiate between people by pitching up, pitching, pitching low, changing the speed, adding mannerisms into speech or like specific turns of phrase. You don't have to go to do accents to, to get different characters. Um, one of my favorites is also uh, changing how much or how little uh, I talk through my nose. Because like there's a trick you can do if you're talking, and then you just try and think about how you wanna you wanna feel your speech in your sinuses, like instead of just talking normally where it's sort of back here, it's a way of sort of projecting where you just you try and direct a lot more of your voice to the front of your skull, and it comes out a bit clearer. Um, uh, so actors do it, singers do it, um, but also when you start to send more and more of your voice through your nose, then eventually you can sort of end up just doing this. Um, so there are lots of ways to do it without uh, potentially pissing off an entire nation of people. Which, if you can avoid it, is good. But 
I do find it very funny when people do English accents, in fairness. Uh, I once played a game of The Witcher RPG at PAX Unplugged with uh, Nomadic, who is a Twitch streamer who is great. Um, uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, search him out. Um, I think it's, it is Gnome Edic, or but like Gnome Medic. Um, really great, really great streamer, like really knowledge about TTRPGs and stuff. Anyway, we're sat there playing The Witcher and he starts talking and his character is incredibly posh. And I had the best fucking time because it was an American just lambasting an English person, like a posh English person. And at one point I laughed. I was just like, that's what I sound like. It was great fun. So, shade's going on. Um, hopefully, as you can see, it uh, looks grim. And then the highlight in this is super simple. I'm just going to go back in with the cream and just do these edge parts of the armour and leave the normal bits just sort of dirty. Um, I deliberately wanted this team to be a quick paint job because... Um, I just I wanted to have fun painting them, but I didn't want to agonise over them, and I just wanted to do something a little bit sort of like slapdash. So I've been having a lot of fun with these, and um, individually they don't look amazing, but as a team they're like quite um, uh, effective. I hope anyway. Nearly knocked over the Agrax Earthshade there. Not Agrax Earthshade, Sarah from Sepia. Fucking shoulder. It's really giving me some trouble. Anyway, um I just I just clocked the time. Um it's just gone six PM here in um nasty little plague island. So uh, I'm gonna finish shading this one model and then we're gonna have a five to seven minute break. During that time, do what you want. Do you need some water? Are you comfy enough? Um is there anything you sort of wished you had to hand earlier that you could go grab now? You know what to do with five to seven minutes of free time. You've been doing it your whole life. I, for one, am going to go to the toilet, um, freshen up my drink, um, check in on the dog because she's not in with me, and uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be right back. And then we'll keep daubing wash on these horrible little men. Um, so, yeah, if you aren't going anywhere, then um, please enjoy this picture of my dog and some smooth jazz. Um, as the nice switch says, everyone practice your regional accents during the break because we will be having a test when we get back. So, um, I, yes. Good luck, everybody. Um, I will be testing you. Uh, yeah, back in five to seven. See you then.
Well, 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 if it isn't all of you lot. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, as, a, as a quick reminder, in case uh, you're just joining us, we're painting uh, some bloody horrible Nurgly Blood Bowl uh, players. This is... Um, well, they look... Some of them look like right now. They're going to look more like this when they're done. Um, so, yeah, a ways to go on them, but also not as... Not loads of work. Um, it's got to shade three more of them, and then we're going to start highlighting. So there we go. Dylan, uh, I, Dylan, could you tell me how to pronounce your surname? Because it's putting me in a in a headspin. Uh, Kat, Katagan has said, uh, this music has replaced the previous music stuck in my head for the past decade, which was the 1967 Star Trek scene transition score. <laughs> Uh, oh, I saw somebody ask earlier if I'm more of a Star Wars or Star Trek fan, by the way. Uh, I like both. Uh, probably a bit more Star Wars than Star Trek. Although I haven't really watched Star Wars in ages, apart from the latest three films. Uh, I'm not that invested in either, really, is the um, is the short answer, I think. Fine franchises, both. But, like, meh. Used to love them as a kid, and now I'm just not, you know... Overly fast. Is this the right shade? Yes, it is. Guess I'm just using um, um, using it heav more heavily than I thought. Cadigan, just like you said. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I got. Oh. Um. Will says, uh, made my partner lunch and opened a packet of pickle chips. Pickle chips are. Oh, no, wait, you are literally talking about dill pickle flavored potato chips. Never mind. Um, because, oh my goodness. Um,. Whenever I did a pack, I would raid the nearest 7-Eleven and buy all of their, their packets of um, pickle bites. I would also do it for E3, actually. Just just walking around with packets upon packets of pickle bites because they're delicious. And also, good source of electrolytes. Um, I would just eat those as a tasty snack whenever I wanted to eat something while walking on the show floor. It was great. Jan Pale says, hello, beautiful people, and hope you're all having a lovely evening with a heart emoji. How is everyone, and how are you, Johnny? I'm very well, Jan. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, just uh, painting up some mildly horrific Blood Bowl players, as one does. need to move my lamp back in. That's why I can't see. And I need to take my glasses off. That's why my eyes are going funny. There we go. <sighs> RV Dammit says, I have had just the right amount of too much puff pizza. <laughs> Puff pizza is a great idea. So this is coming on. That's why I really like doing this sort of armor. Just like slap on the cream, make it look filthy, clean it up a tiny bit, but not very much. Done. Not going to win any awards for these models, but also, you know, they'll look all right on the tabletop. So that's what we want.
Mm, there he is. Horrible, horrible punchy man. Now some of these have guts on show, so I'll need to go back in and base colour those before we do the last um, shading, which is uh, the skin. But we also do have to um, highlight what we've painted so far. So there's a few steps left to go on these. Oh, that's why my shoulder hurts. I'm slouching and I lowered my chair earlier for the um, camera angle. There we go. Why do I hurt? I've spent hours painting in a terrible posture. Makes sense. <sighs> Anonymous says, I'm tired enough. I'm always thinking of going to bed, but it's only just past 7 p.m. here, so I wouldn't be able to sleep, at least not a full night. It's a pickle. That is, I hate those nights, especially since I'm always like, I will stay up until half nine, and then I get in bed and wake up. I just wish I'd just gone for it, to be honest. Ta-da. Right, that's all the, all the shading on that done. Now we're going to move to a smaller brush. John Nigma says, needs to do some work for my Halloween D&D one-shots. Thanks for the chill company, Johnny. My very great pleasure. Um, I hope the... Uh the prep goes very well for your D&D one shot. So there. Here we go with this little cheeky thing. That'll do. All right. Ooh. Ethan Blomquist says, hi LSPs, I'm back. Hello Ethan, I hope you're well, and that your travels to whatever dimension you were off in were um, pleasant. Hmm. Right, so. I'm gonna get some heavy red on the go. Not that one, that one's not dry yet. So I'll start with these ones. Well, that hasn't really dried either. Curses. Maybe we just have to sit here for a minute. Well, it's no bad thing, actually. I can have a look at what models have intestines. This one. This one's got a worm on the shoulder and some stuff coming out the back, which is grim. You can see on this shoulder blade just here, little, little grave worm there, and then some stuff coming out there, a few coming out of here, so we'll base coat those, so that's these two, let's see about this one, hello sir, I'm here to check you for worms, yes, that's a bad case of them, pardon me, I'm just checking you for worms, do you have any worms, no, no worms on you, very good, And yes, you certainly have intestines. All right, four of them. So. Oh, 
Oh god, my shoulder. John Nigma says, thanks for the encouragement. I'm trying to go for a haunted house setting, and dare I say I'm taking some inspiration from Unreal Estate. Well, well. Oh, wow. Will and Alyssa, in the same second, made a joke about the models dragging their bums along the carpet because they've got worms. Very good. Well done. Okay. Oh, okay now. Right. One of you must be dry enough for me to paint. Not really. But if I use a brush to remove the shade, yes, that will work. There we go. All right, we're off. This lot also have mouths, which I ought to paint. So we'll get onto that at some point. Such an odd place to have a single coil of intestine, and yet here we are. And it's going to look like he's done a shit job of putting lipstick on. Yep, because it's all over his teeth, but I am going to daub some red in there. But that'll look very different once we're done with the model, I promise. And then we've got these little worms. That's a little worm. That is a tiny worm. That is a Wyrm. Oh God, AG Path says painting lighter areas is a real highlight. Yeah, man. Mabel Teacher says a single coil of intestine is Heavy Red's first album. <laughs> Yeah, I like the red stable of uh, of bands. I mean, I hate Simply Red, but you've got Simply Red, you've got Heavy Red, obviously you've got uh, Complicated Red, that's Math Core. Um, what are the other ones I've forgotten? Y you know, all those bands that are something red. Help us out, chat. This will be good. Also, I, should really, I really ought to know better, because that's going to be the next 20 minutes of chat, isn't it? Ash Versus says, I have returned from the 80s. All the Reds, says the Nice Witch. Blood Reds, says REC. Or REC. Skinned Red. <laughs> Jack Wood says, remember kids, it could be worse. You could be Mick Hucknall. Ugh. Ugh. Some guy sitting down with some super chat saying, This is for you and the chatters. Thank you, Johnny, for being such a good calming influence. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much, some guy sitting down. That is very kind. Um I kind of wasn't like when I was coming up with plans for this channel and being like, I'm gonna strike out on my own and do my own thing, I you know, like I just knew I wanted to paint because I like painting. It wasn't really initially my plan to be like, I'm going to do super chill streams and be a super chill streaming person. And then it just sort of happened that way because it turns out this is what I'm like when I'm relaxed. So, um, yeah, it's nice. But I'm glad it resonates with people. Um, and I very much appreciate each person that turns up to watch. It's very, very nice. It is validating in a way that normally makes me shrink away and feel like I want to disappear into the floor. So good job, chat. You're all wonderful. Slightly red. Teenage indie band who mostly cover topics of embarrassments as mobile teachers. That's what we're talking about. Here we go. That's the sort of thing we're after. Nick Jeffrey has done a super chat saying, Otis Redding? Very good. Davy Jones says, uh, Hi, LSPs. Hi, Johnny. Just came back from work. What did I miss so far? Just painting a lot of uh, horrible pestilential Blood Bowl men, really. Um, uh, what else has happened? Um, we're now discussing red bands. 
slightly red. <laughs> the Grateful Red. Well done, Ash Versus. Come sauntering in from the 1980s and bang, straight out of the park. Oh, I missed the I missed the little worm on your shoulder pad. Oh, there's one on your back as well. Ethan Blomquist is on a super chat saying, "We lovely skeleton pals like us." Uh, sorry, we lovely skeleton pals like when you're relaxed, Johnny. Come stay with us forever and ever and ever. Oh gosh, um, kind offer. I will take it under advisement, Ethan. Thank you so much for the super chat. Either way. Rouge against the machine. Very good, REC. Would it be? It's probably REC, isn't it? Because it's RE space C. So RE C. If it isn't, do correct me, but um, there we go. Now, Alethor Rich says left on red. Indie band about having your text ignored by a crush. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Red Army Band says Cory Amalayam. I mean, uh, yeah, an actual, actual. Actual band and a banger at that. But um, I was kind of thinking more along the lines of like, simply red. You know, intensely red. Sli you know, slightly red, like Mabel Teachers said. That's the kind of joke format I was thinking about. But my goodness, you've come up with some good ones nonetheless. Aggressively red, says Jackwood. There we go. Bikini Vermilion, says the nice witch. Feminist punk band who have a lot of songs about Jam Week. That is excellent. Well done. Dramatically red. What would dramatically red's genre be? Opera, probably. Barely red, says the amazing flying chimp. That's um, shoegaze, isn't it? Slippery red, says Josephine Wunderberg. Okay. We're getting there. Finger guns. Dramatically read to musicals, says Rudy. Yeah, fair. Red Cognito says, very confused, Red. No, seriously, my poor brain. Sorry. Yeah, this is this is a bad time to have Red as your uh, username, isn't it? Apologies. I'll stop now. That's enough puns about the colour red, please, chat. That'll do now. I mean, there's no guarantee they're going to listen to me, Red Cognito, but I tried. Right, so now we've painted those worms red. I'm going to go back over them with sort of a lilac -y purple. To just make them look a bit bloody weird. And we'll probably go in with a lighter version of the same colour to add a tiny bit more contrast. <laughs> Zeka Genesis says they didn't say it in a French accent, they're not talking to us. <laughs> Fuck's sake, <laughs> that got me good. Mm. 
lightly light lightly red, mostly pink covers of so Specky Four Eye. All right, that's the last one I'm reading out because we're not going to get better than that. That's fantastic. Lovely, horrible, horrible Nurgle men. Okay. There's the uh, slip of intestine. Horrifying. Okay, and then you're fine. Oops, I completely missed that entire part of a leg to shade. I have to fix that. But then we're going to go on to highlighting this armour. Jan Pale says, well, off I go. I hope the rest of your evenings will go as you want them to with a heart emoji. Thank you very much, Jan. Have a lovely, lovely evening. I hope it treats you well. There we go. Right. Time for everyone's favourite colour. Pale Sand by Vallejo. It's been so long since I've used it. I doing? Oh yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Everything's fine. <laughs> I'm not using the deceiver, no. The deceiver is heavy orange from Vallejo. Fear not, everybody. Okie dokie. David Jones says, I'd love to support you on Patreon, but I can't because payment methods. Uh, but I can super chat, so here you are. Thank you, David. That's very, very kind. Um, your appreciate your your support is very much appreciated. Um, I'm sorry that Patreon is an ass sometimes. Generally speaking, I think it's a, an all right platform, but uh, yeah, I know some people have had issues with it. But also, there's no pressure to actually join the Patreon if you you know, well, if they won't let you, <laughs> you know what I mean. Right, so we're just going back in now. You can see on this little chest plate, we're just doing some little highlights, like going around the edges of this pauldron, just to make it look nice. That's the end goal anyway. Well, not nice, but well-executed nasty. That sounds worse. I'm just going to stop talking. Executed, nasty, horrible. Let's forget I said that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So it probably means we're entering that part of the stream where I forget to talk because I'm concentrating on doing things neatly, like this little shoulder pad. That's how we're looking so far. Um, but do bear with me and I'll be back to vaguely normal uh, programming. 
relatively soon. So the nice thing is you've got to do this bit quite carefully. But then after that, I just start slapping shade down on the uh, on the flesh. And it um, it's quite cathartic. Okay, is that bit done? Lower body, let's go. That was untidy, but oh well. It's only one of like 16. Really glad that chat latched so hard onto well executed nasty, the thing I asked you to forget I'd said. You really do get the community you deserve, don't you? Ooh, that'll be a nice bit to do. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Getting there. God, my eyes feel tired. I suppose I have been staring at models for hours now, but... Mancoy says, have you heard of the Streisand effect, Johnny? Yes, regrettably, I have. I'm learning an object lesson in it now. There we go, that's that. Next. Minnell says, Johnny, you're too quotable for your own good. Brackets, please don't stop. Regrettably, I don't think I could even if I wanted to, so... Don't worry. That bit was clumsy. It's a bit better. Okay. Nurgle, nurgle, nurgle. Oi, oi, oi. Sarah Burke asks a question that has come up from me before. When would you go no contact with someone? Because a family member has just texted me a very crass text about my decision to come out as non-binary. Obviously, you know, cutting contact with a family member uh, feels like a, a much bigger decision than, say, with just a friend. But um, personally, I'd say explain that you didn't, you know, tell them you didn't appreciate that shit. And if they they double down on it or if they don't back down that's it that'll do your first duty is to yourself like take care of yourself yeah i mean will says 
about then, to be honest. Fuck them, fuck them, and fuck them. And that is, yeah. I think you'd be well within your rights to just do it now. If you want to give them a chance to explain themselves and go row back on things, um, then, you know, good for you. But absolutely don't feel like you have to just because they're family. Um, Because if they're not willing to treat you with respect, then there's no reason you have to carry on contact them at all, let alone being civil. Either way, I'm sorry that happened, and I hope it's not thrown you too much, and that uh, um, things are resolved in a satisfactory manner, however that manifests. Um, and yeah, take take care of yourself. Like I say, you are your first priority. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Is that armor's coming on? It's going all right. It's it's often a thing with Warhammer where things look like ass until there's a magic point where it all starts to come together. And it is sort of... I do like how these models suddenly change. To be honest, it's at the end when I start doing all of the flesh shading. But... Um, you can start to see them becoming more coherent now, and that's always a pleasure. Doom Biscuit says that loincloth is very distressing. That's kind of the rule with loincloths, isn't it? Most of them are. I haven't seen them in any, you know, spring-summer collections in the UK, at least, for a very long time. Oh, that was clumsy. Oh, well. Okay, that was very clumsy. Mm. Nice, which says flesh shading is what I call putting my makeup on. It just sounds cooler than like doing my face. Forgive me, I must flesh shade. More power to you, nice witch. Those of you who have been crafting during the stream, how's it going? Have you made good progress? I hope you're having a marvellous time. Three, two to go. Excellent reference there from Josephine. If men find out we can flesh shade, they're going to tell the church. Slayla J is pretty excellent. I'm too poor for dental work, but I'm not too poor to contour.
Okay. Minna L says, I painted a layer of black on a cauldron. It's small, around 10 centimeters across. So now I'm having a break and toasting marshmallows. Yes, please. More painting breaks should come with toasted marshmallows. Ooh, not my best work. But oh well. I have a painterly style. Which is a fancy term I get to use to explain why I don't correct some of my mistakes. I'm going for an overall effect, darling. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Well, says, not your best work, but unquestionably your latest. Well, there you go. Like I say, I want to kind of get this team out of the way. Um, so I'm not pushing myself to make these absolutely, you know, like competition quality. Come on. Come on. Need it. There we go. <laughs> Mabel Teach says in quotes, I'm exploring the medium. <laughs> I'm exploring mediocrity, maybe. Ho ho ho. Fa fa ho 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 ho. Shit. Okay, sorted. Shit. <laughs> It's fine. Mm -mm -mm. The nice switch says, I've got a scarper to start the long decision process over what takeaway to get. Thank you for the lovely hangs, Johnny and chat. Take care. Have a good one, the nice switch. I hope you have, uh, I hope you settle on a takeaway in good time and have something friggin' delicious. May food envy come no closer this evening. Uh, after my bit about mushy peas earlier, I uh, have suggested to my wife that we get chips for dinner because there's a chippy not too far from our place. Uh, they have said yes, so I think think mushy peas are in the offing. And then they'll be in my mouth. So all's well that ends well on this a Tuesday. Danny42 says, help, I don't like the concept of mushy peas. Sorry. Ethan Blomquist says, I haven't heard an update for a while. How are things going in Blood Bowl? Uh, last I heard you were getting ready to start season two. Have you played any games yet? So season one is yet to wrap. And actually, uh, I'm back in. I was eliminated in the quarterfinals. But my opponent has had to withdraw from the league um, on account of becoming a father. So I'm actually back in. I'm through to the semifinals. I'm playing on the 10th, I think, um, TBD, to be honest. I'm playing soonish, um, and then the final will be towards the end of next month, and then we're starting season two in January. So at the minute, I'm 
sort of getting into pre-season friendlies to try out the goblin team I've painted to see if I like them enough to play them for an entire season. And we'll go from there. But yeah, all is good in the land of hot bobs. We're even planning a hot bobs Christmas do. <laughs> and like a one day invitational tournament just for shits and grins. There we go. There's that. So that's all of the cream highlighted. Now we've just got to do the green stuff. Sarah Burke says, for the uninitiated, what a mushy peas. I mean, it's it's a bastion of British cuisine, if you can call it that. Um, they're just peas that are smashed up. Kind of like um, Benny42 says, have you played a match with the bear model that we try not to mention too often? Or did I join this channel too, la too late to hear about his amazing victories? He is just a model I bought because I thought it was fun. Um, he is not a Blood Bowl model. But... Um, God, that would have been interesting if I'd fielded him. I don't think anyone would have been very happy with me. Oh. Um, Oakmail has popped into the chat. Hello, Oakmail. Uh, Isam Hussain says, Hey, Johnny, what's your thought on Gundam model kits? Do you ever plan on building one? Um, West Coast Weaver says, Why are peas of any sort being added to chips? They're just great. You have them with vinegar, they're delicious. Leave us alone. Chips is like the one thing we do well. Um, uh, but to answer the question, uh, thoughts on Gundam model kits? I think they're very cool. I think they are intricate in a way that scares me. I don't enjoy very complicated model builds. My favourite bit is very much the painting. So with that in mind, they don't excite me that much. I don't really have plans on building one. But I kind of I follow some people on Twitter who build them. When I see them post their, model, post their models, I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. There's a Gundam. And I always have a look, but I think that's probably about as far as I'll get with it. Um, I mean, don't don't hold me to that. You never know where the hobby is going to take me next. Somewhere expensive, probably. But, um, yeah, I think they are cool, but thus far they have not called to me specifically. This brush is dog shit. -da. So we're starting to... Here we go. Highlight the green. It's relatively subtle. Which is to say, actually, that's barely showing up at all. But oh well. Try a bit harder on these next ones. There we go. That's some lines I can actually highlight. Let's try it. Jack Wood says, Gunpla terrifies me and I want to build lots of them. There you go. They are quite terrifying. And it, it is, again, it's just that thing of like, ah, so I'm taking the bit I enjoy the least about making models and making it the main thing and it's harder. Hmm. It's probably why I've not really... Dip my toe in those plasticky, plasticky waters. But again, never say never. Right. Hello, you've got a substantial cloak that I can highlight here. Cloak, cloth, skirt.
Wow, it's really not showing up very well on camera. There you can see a highlight of sorts. <laughs> William Ryan says, thanks for talking about chips. Now I want chips. Yup. Sorry about that. I remember that happening when I did my first ever charity stream um, on this channel. Last November, actually. God, time flies. And uh, I think at one point somebody mentioned having got Chinese food. And then over the course of the next two hours, like 10 people were like, just got Chinese food because everyone just fancied it. I ended up having it for dinner afterwards, after the stream. It just really, like... Uh, really caught everyone by surprise and suddenly everyone was ordering in Ho Fun and other such delights. Boop, nearly dropped the model again. I'm really good at that today. Oh yeah, the shoulder pad. Nice, nice, nice. Done, done, done. You're done. You're done. You're allegedly done, but we're going to refresh that bit. That looks crap. Doesn't look much better, but hey ho. Right. Let's highlight this lineman's butt. Oh, mushy peas, like the UK's version of guac. <laughs> don't know if you caught that my wife's voice just <laughs> drifted in from the other room going no up yours keep talking like that I'm not going to get you any scampi yeah hmm <clears throat> Well, I like mushy peas anyway. <laughs> Will says the English version of guac is beef dripping. Vaguely troubling. Right. I think that's all of the green highlighted. Yeah, all right. Now it's time for the slightly messy bit. Ooh, Rosen Obsolete says, I'm making pesto gnocchi for dinner this evening. Trying to resist the urge for takeout now. No, pesto gnocchi is amazing. Stick to your guns. You're on the right track. Absolutely bloody delicious. <sighs> okay. Right. Karaberg Crimson. What other ones do I use? Right from Flesh Shade, that's right.
So we're going to start off with Carabag Crimson. Oh, didn't do the teeth on this lot, did I? Where's that tiny brush gun? Lizam Hussain says, what's your favourite bit of painting figures, Johnny? Um, I'd say it's either shading or highlighting. It's that bit where it goes from looking okay to looking like something you're actually going to finish up and be pleased with, rather than just something where you're like, oh, wow, I've well, I've put colour on this. Um, there is that definite tipping point. I enjoy all of it, really, but I would say those are the most exciting bits for me. Um, no teeth on you. You've got a you've got a mouth with teeth in it. Um, I do enjoy all of it, but um, yeah, those those bits are exciting. But it also depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I just I like to paint something really simple, so I don't have to pay attention. Sometimes I really like to push myself. I find batch painting quite boring. Basically, what I'm doing now. Because it feels like I'm not really paying attention to any of the models. Some guy sitting down says, Tattoo question for the chat and Johnny. Is getting a tattoo on a body part that gets friction like the hand or other affect the duration of the ink? Does it wear out faster or get paler quicker? Um, the challenge is actually just getting the uh, ink in in the first place. So this is still healing. It's got another two weeks to go. But once it's healed, it'll... it'll because it's quite a hard wearing area, um, it will look quite hazy, but it's not going to deteriorate any faster than any other tattoo because the ink is in the skin that way. Um, so if you basically, if, if you want to go get something like on a hard wearing area, you need to go bold. Like the, the phrase is bold will hold. Um, and like you can't you just can't get fine line tattoos like on places like that. So just be aware that it's gonna look a bit different. It might need touching up and all that kind of stuff. But there's nothing to say you can't get it done. Um so yeah. Nick Jeffrey has done a super chat saying, Home from shopping, thanks for the company. All this mushy peas talk makes me think. No other food is served mushy, e.g. you not want mushy cheese. This is very close to turning into um a fast show bit, isn't it? Do you like peas? Do you like cheese? Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. Mushy. Mushy, yeah. We don't really get many other foods that are advertised as being mushy. How strange. Oh, uh, yeah, mashed potatoes, but... That's sort of like mashed, not mushed avocado. I mean, okay, they're not advertised as being mushy. Jack Wood says there's something spectac spectacularly awful about the phrase mushy cheese. Yeah, it's quite upsetting, isn't it? Oh, Naka says, lovely to see you streaming after the Oxbox stream and a quick call to the parents, so nice to come here to this chill area. P.S. Great work on the MCM London session. It was great and my first time live. Thank you so much for coming. It was really, really good fun. I had a nice, nice time. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pleasure to be up there just talking nonsense. Mm -mm -mm. Just doing a tiny little shade in the mouths of these lads so their teeth don't look completely pristine. And then it's time to get messy with shades. Because I'll start with this one. You can see here, like, the skin is kind of quite uniformly sort of that pale green with um, sort of orange bits where it's pulled. But we want it to look um, 
uh, more like uh, uh, a decomposing body. So what I'm going to do is go in quite heavy in patches with Caraberg Crimson and immediately it's still well, stop that pulling quite so much. It starts to just break up the the uniformity of the skin, but also just make the skin look like it's been through a shit time, basically. Dr. Swanks, I have a random question for the NB folk in chat today. What are your preferred formal prefixes instead of sir or miss? Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. I got, I've, I've sort of, on post, I've started to use mix, you know, or MX. Um, that sort of works for me, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's up to the individual, isn't it? Right, we're going to go really heavy on the stomach shading here. We want it to that to look like a real real focal point for the pestilence. Will says to shade with Drukey before this is completely dry. Drukey is also on the list of things I'm going to slap on here. Where's it gone, actually? It would have been good if I dug it out. Hmm. You know what? You can't find it for now. I do want to get the flesh shade involved, though. Edgy Pest says, personally, I prefer no prefix at all, just my name. Yeah, that works for me as well, to be honest. It's, you know... It's like when... People call me sir in public. It's like, and you know, you're you're trying to be polite, but like, actually, it's you know, it's just weird. It's not it's not weird, but it's like, what am I saying? It's like it's not alienating, but it's just a bit like, oh god, is is it really necessary to prove how hard you're trying to be polite to me when actually, you know, what it amounts to is that I'm sort of kind of being misgendered it's a funny one and I think again it just comes down to the individual doesn't it Really just gonna slap it on. Like deliberately purposefully slapdash all this stuff. But yeah, this is the bit where they stop looking like weird sort of Ghostbuster extras and start looking like actual things with a purpose. Oh, yeah, hello. Yes. I've looked, I've been looking forward to shading this particular sort of bloated arm for ages because, look, it's fucking horrible. Blech. Grim, grim, grim. I promise I'll paint something nice next time. Or will I? I'll try. Deliberately leaving the back of this one undone for now because I want to come back in and hit that with the flesh shade rather than the crimson.
There's it dribbling out of his mouth. And then, right, we're going to absolutely annihilate this tummy again, aren't we? Yes, we are. That's far too much shade. Get it in there. Needs a bit more again, actually. Okay, leave that for now. Ooh. Will says, from those sighs, I'm wondering if I've accidentally sent a pun. Uh, I was signed because I just got a message and it's a video from a friend. I haven't watched it yet, but the um, the sort of first frame of it is a stock pot with um, carrots and onions seemingly simmering away, which means that my friend is making a stew, which means he's about to film himself putting some fucking pearl barley in it because he and I disagree fundamentally on whether or not pearl barley is good in a stew. I don't think it is. I think it gives it a weird like slimy texture that he swears by it and uh, he makes stew in the autumn and winter and never misses an opportunity to wind me up because that's just the caliber of friend i have so there we go Corvus Albright has done a super chat saying, just finished an absolutely ridiculous introduction call for a new project the customer's team lead basically wants my boss to carry a pager what is this Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't seen that film. How odd. Is your boss going to do it? Don't super chat that, obviously. Here we go. There's this one. He's, yeah, here we go. They're coming together now. Heh heh heh. Models. Fuck, I know what this will be. Give me one sec while I watch the video. Yeah, onions, carrots, they're in the pan. There it fucking is! Big fucking bag of pearl barley. Great. Mabel Teacher says, I use pearl barley in all sorts, but I'm a... Oh, a heathen. My brain completely misfired there, and I saw, thought you described yourself as a heat hen. I was like, what's a heat hen? Heathen. Good Lord. What's wrong with me today? Okay. So, we've now got these kind of... Sort of ended up looking like a fruit salad. But here's how they're looking right now. I am going to go back in with the uh, flesh shade and sort of do a bit more work with the different shade. But um, yeah, they're sort of practically done, these ones. Which means I might wrap up early because um, I've experienced this before. If I finish something on stream and then start something else and I don't have much time to work on it, uh, I abandon it and I stop working on it. And I don't want to do that with this project so we'll see how we get on but I might end up wrapping at half past rather than uh, at eight o'clock just so you know just to prep you drop the brush what has happened to my motor skills today I'm dropping everything There goes another model. Christ. Johnny. OK. 
Okay. Those are done. That's shaded. Oh, hello. You need some work. Missed you entirely. No. Come here, you little scamp. I should have started with the flesh shade. It kind of makes the skin less luminous, and then with the crimson, you can really smack it. Oh well. Every day is a school day. Okay. Ooh, yeah. are gross. Oatmeal says, partner wanted me to remind you all to put some ice in your hats, as in take it easy. Where's that come from? Where's put some ice in your hats originate? Because that sounds great. I'm a big fan of idioms like that. Got to throw the spoon in the corner. All right. Let's have a little horrible rogues gallery, shall we? Let's have a look at what I've done. Oops. Ping. Oh, actually. I wanted to do a little highlight Oy, on some of that metal. Mm. Stick with this. I have to say, Vallejo's gun metal isn't amazing. I do actually prefer Citadel's lead belcher. In case anyone was uh, was wanting me to check in on how I feel about metallics. Yeah, I should really be putting like typhus corrosion on this, shouldn't I? Oh well. Ba -dum -ba -dum -da. Mm. Oh, that's why. The lid is not going on my super glue. Lewis Cowper suggests my favourite paints as a follow up series to my favourite board games. Could happen. Bit niche. Could just be the same video about pale sand every day. Or every month, rather. I'm sleepy. Yeah, I'm going to do these last little touches, show you what I've done, and then we're going to call it a day. As I could do with taking it easy for a bit, I think. Yeah, I'm all right with these. So let's... Okay. So here's the first one. Some bits are still drying, like the shade that's by the intestine there. But uh, here's how they're looking. 
one. Two. I could have done more work on the little thing sat on their head, to be honest. But, uh, oh well. There we go. Looking really beaten up, actually. Grim. Three. Big bruiser of a lad. Again, still drying. Number four. Quite like the way the tummy's come out on this one, actually. There's a big dollop of uh, shade there. Let's take some of that off. With a finger, very scientific. Good, good, good. And then finally, this might be my favourite one I've done today. Uh, there's this little lineman who's absolutely hooning it down the field. And there we go. So that is one, two, three, four, that's five, six, seven, eight of these models in total done, because obviously there were some I did before. So we're getting there. There's only three off a starting roster. How many have I actually got to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's this absolutely honking massive one, um, which I won't be using anyway. And then they've got a mascot called Billet Piper. So that would be fun. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just under halfway through this team, which isn't too bad. Um, and yeah, that's, whoopsie. That'll about do it for this stream, I think. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in with me. It's been um, a very, very nice chill time. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely rest of their day. Wah! However much is left. Um, John Nigma says they all look wonderfully horrible. Thank you. Um, yeah, however much of your day is left, I hope you have a bloody lovely time. I am um, very sleepy, so I'm going to go hit the sofa, I think. But um, yeah, I'll be back on Thursday streaming some form of video game. Uh, and then there are new episodes of Press Any Kiadini on uh, Saturday. Um, other stuff is in the pipe work. Um, so uh, if you are a patron, keep an eye on the Patreon feed. If you aren't a patron, it's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Kiadini. Um, loads of other stuff for you to watch on the channel. I hope you have a nice time. Thanks again. Oh my God. I'll catch you very soon. <laughs> Goodbye.